Hey Captains, this is Karandar. Today I'm going to run through everything going on in update 010. During this update, we continue with last update's Snowflakes event, so if you have any ships that still have flakes, you've got plenty of time left to get those rewards. And similar to other updates, this one also offers us daily login bonuses around the Lunar New Year theme, and various consumables, credits, some doubloons, and a couple of Lunar containers that reward consumables, and also offer a small chance at one of the special themed ships. Once in game, and checking under combat missions, we can find several new entries here. Our normal recurring daily missions with consumables, coal, and steel, as well as six combat missions earning base XP in select nations of ships, and each of these award 100 doubloons each for 600 in total. And this is in addition to the 500 doubloons that all captains with access level of eight or higher should have received this morning. And these are meant to help cover the costs of moving captains to different ships during this update in the commander respect. For the next 27 days of this update, we have a lunar year chain of missions that unlocks each of the next four weeks. We can earn additional consumables and both Lunar New Year's and Journey to the West containers. And again, each of these offers consumables and a small chance of a lunar themed ship. Completing the entire mission chain will award the Tier 6 Premium Pan Asian Destroyer the Anshan, a port slot, and a six point captain. If you already own the ship, then you'll receive 5,550,000 credits, the commander, and a port slot instead. This update is also the last for the dockyard missions for the Heizen. Again, 27 days remain, and the last three mission trees unlock over the next two weeks. Once the final dockyard mission section becomes available, there's 15 days to complete all you need. As the dockyard and lunar missions unlock each week through this update, take a good look, work out which if any of the missions have the same requirements so that you can work on both at the same time to try and help you get through these more quickly. This update will bring us two different clan brawls played in arm race battle mode. Note that all the times in the schedule are in UTC so convert these to your local time zone. Both brawls are going to be 7 versus 7 and the first being tier 8 ships and runs January 27th through February 1st while the second is tier 10 ships who runs February 10th through the 15th. Fleet makeup allows two battleships and no CVs for a change. And only the person creating the division needs to be in a clan. The rest of the team can be made up of mercenaries. And if you're interested in volunteering as a mercenary during any of these time slots, you can try your luck, click the create divisions button beside the battle button in game. Once you've made yourself available this way, if there is a clan member looking to fill their roster, they can invite you to their team. Now rewards are the same for both of these brawl sessions, with 3 million credits, 120,000 elite commander XP, and 5,000 coal available, available to be one for each. In 010, World of Warships continues its Twitch collaboration throughout this update, and a captain can earn up to 5 Twitch containers and 4 Twitch missions. As usual, there's the rare chance of one of the containers being an epic drop, and if you are lucky enough to get one of these this month, it will be the Tier 6 Premium Pan-Asian Cruiser Wang He. The containers and mission both offer the usual consumables and credits we're used to otherwise. Also, there's still the Holiday Twitch Prime Bundle through January 26 that awards one of each of the Santa containers. Hopefully, World of Warships continues with these bundles through 2021, as there was some decent free content this past year through that collaboration. The Lunar New Year's event runs through the entire update. Scrolling through here, we can see more of the details regarding the container contents. First, the journey to the west, where you receive consumables and have a small chance at one of four premium ships, Tier 8 Cruiser Wukong, Tier 9 Battleships Baiji and Wu Zheng, and Tier 8 Carrier San Zhang. Now, the Lunar New Year's containers can drop one of the following premium ships. Tier 6 Destroyer Anshan, Tier 8 Destroyers Fenyang, Selewange, or Loyang, pardon my pronunciation, <laughs> and Tier 6 Cruiser Wanghe, Tier 8 Cruiser Irian. And now with all that aside, we come to the biggest part of this update, the Commander Skill Rework. Now I'm just going to touch briefly on this today because it's a big topic and I'm going to be releasing a more in-depth video in the next day or two 
for, on this whole rework. The key changes are changing from 19 to 21 points and making the sh skills ship class specific. So what that means is there's a skill tree for each class with each captain. Wargaming has done this to hopefully add more variety in build options. And time will tell if, they, if we do see more builds or we just settle back into one and two favorites for each class. But going forward, earning elite commander XP will be the same on captains who have maximum points, but we also will be gaining 5% elite commander XP as well until we earn that maximum 21 points. Throughout this update, we have free commander respecs, so try as many builds as possible to find the best one for your playstyle. We also can demount ship upgrades for free during this entire update, so play around and have some fun. The doubloon cost to move captains specialized on one ship to another is also reduced 90%, so the cost is 50 doubloons. So this is where those 1100 doubloons I mentioned earlier from the missions and the 500 we received at the start of the day comes into play. We can move captains up to 22 times while the discount is active through this update. And I don't think many people will move more than a half a dozen to be honest. After the rework, if we find that we have any spare commanders not in ships, we'll now have the option to dismiss them and reclaim a percentage of their XP as elite commander XP using either credits or doubloons to convert them with. Now a big change that will be welcomed by those with several premium ships is the ability to train each captain for each ship class so that each captain can have a skill tree for a destroyer, cruiser, battleship, and carrier. Now we can still only have one of them specialized for a single tech tree ship, but where the benefit lies is, say I have a Lexington to tech tree, my captain specialized for that, skills are trained up. But I also have a Massachusetts, which is a premium ship. So I can take that same captain and train the battleship skills for the Massachusetts, which is unique because a lot of people play it with a secondary, which is very different from a Montana. So it required a uh, unique commander in the past. You can see in this captain, for example, along the top, the skills specialized. There's the number beside each of the icons, so the destroyer's 19, that's skill points remaining to be applied. Same with the cruiser. I have none remaining on the battleship, so my skills have all been allocated. The aircraft carrier has three points left, so most of them have been allocated. So that helps you to understand if you still have available and could use it on, say, the kid as well, being a premium destroyer. So lots of flexibility that we didn't have in the past. I'll definitely go over this process and the skills in more detail in my next video. For now, just be sure to read the skills in detail because some of them, uh, the benefit with this skill is only under certain conditions like battleship, main gun rate of fire when you're inside the range of your secondaries with an enemy or with top grade gunner on the cruiser increases its reload if the enemy is inside the cruiser's standard detection range. Now this won't include the detection distance after you fire your guns. Other skills bonuses come with penalties, like you choose heavy HE and SAP shells. This increases your shell damage, but the expense is poorer concealment. Now, along with the skill rework has also been some specific ship changes. So for example, a big one here is secondaries on battleships and cruisers have seen their ranges extended. The Germans and the French have benefited the most from these changes that now see some tier 10 ship secondary batteries extend all the way to 12.5 kilometers. They have a slightly reduced accuracy, but it's they're trying to get this into a balanced state. And you've also got the ability with manual secondary equivalent to fire off of both sides at multiple targets. And German tier 7 to 10 battleships have also received an additional built-in accuracy buff that when combined with improved secondary accuracy will bring them to about 50% improved dispersion. Now, when a ship receives critical engine damage, rather than coming to a stop like it used to in past, it will now drop to just 20% of maximum. So that will add a little bit of survivability and is a welcome change. Atlanta has had its main battery default range changed from 11.1 kilometers to 13.3 to help offset not being able to take AFT. The Colbert has gained improved acceleration and deceleration dynamics to offset the range loss. 
Oklahoma main battery now reloads two seconds quicker, and the Fiji deck armor thickness has increased from 38 to 51 millimeters. And Wargaming is also reminding us that Georgia, Alaska, Massachusetts, Thunderer, and Smallland will be leaving us after this update. And also, Summers will be replaced in the armory by the Austin after the next update with the launch of update 0102. At the bottom page of the 010 update article, there's a get reward orange button for 24 hours of premium time. Just click on that and take advantage of it. In addition to these other changes, there's a lot of small bug fixes and tweaks to known previous issues in this update. I'm not going to run through them all, but one that did catch my eye was the autopilot bug that's supposedly been fixed with carriers. I hope this is repaired because I've seen a lot of aircraft carriers that the autopilot has taken them into spots they had no intention on going. Well, that's it from me for this overview. I hope it helps simplify the month a little, and I'll get my more detailed commander skill rework video out as soon as I can for you, hopefully tomorrow or the day after. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave your comments, like and subscribe, and until the next time, good hunting.